Stampers! Welcome to another week of Watch It Weekly Wednesday. I'm Aubrey, part of the Stampin' Jill creative team, and today I'm excited to share with you the part two of our Stampin' Blends marbling technique videos. On our last video, part one, I showed you how to make a card using the Stampin' Blends and alcohol on vellum cardstock to make this really fun marbling technique. And I showed you a few other cards using that. Today I wanna show you just a little bit of a stepped up version of this. This is kind of the beginning level of the marbling technique. It's pretty simple. You don't have to have a lot of control with the ink that you're running. In the video today, I wanna show you how to control it a little bit more. So once you've done this technique and you've gotten the hang of it, then you can move on to the next step. So in the last video, I showed you this card and these kind of little rosettes that you can make on a card um, and how to do that. I wanna show you this in this video, but I first wanna start with a different card. So we're going to use some different colors and you can see on this card, I'm gonna make a little line right across the card just like this. I'm still using vellum cardstock. This cardstock is really great for this technique. I'll tell you all the different things you'll need to create this card. Um, you'll need vellum cardstock. You'll need alcohol, just regular rubbing alcohol. You will want a Stampin' Spritzer. Um, this, we actually won't be using it to spritz the card. We will just screw off the lid and kind of use that little dipper and just transfer the ink that way. You'll want some paper towels. Those are super handy to have nearby. And you'll want whatever colors of alcohol blends you wanna use. So I'm using Stampin' Up Stampin' Blends and I'm using, let me tell you, Dark Poppy Parade, Dark So Saffron, Dark Bermuda Bay, Light Polished Pink, and Dark Mint Macaron on this card. So I have kind of a lot of colors and you can see on my vellum cardstock, I have already gone and colored all the way up the colors that I want to be on my cardstock. Just like the last um, video that I did, I colored all over. This one, we're just gonna control that color and where it's gonna go a little bit easier on this card. So you can see, I have already started down here in the corner to one by one make my colors kind of run together and move. So I wanna just show you how to do that and control it a little bit easier. So we're going to start right here with this mint macaron color. I haven't done that one yet. Oh, one other thing you need, I'm so sorry, a heat tool. This will just help to make your, um, your life run a little bit easier when you're doing this. So we're going to just take our um, alcohol that's in our Stampin' Spritzer, and instead of spritzing it, like I said, you're gonna twist off that cap, and you're just going to kind of dip it and collect some of that alcohol and then just daub it, dab it right onto the color that you want to be working with. So I want it to be right on that mint macaron. Now that color is gonna start to run a little bit and it might start to run into the other colors. That's okay with me because the marbling technique kind of lends itself to that. So what makes the marbling technique so cool is that as this alcohol dries, it leaves kind of these rings in it. You can see that kind of in this poppy parade color. It kind of leaves those rings as it dries. So as this dries, I'm gonna start by not using my heat tool and just kind of letting it kind of pull within the color and, and make those little rings around the edges. And then when it's kind of made those ridges, I'll come in with my heat tool and turn it on the low setting and just kind of help it to dry the rest of the way. And you'll see that slowly it will just start to make that marbled look. It's just a little bit more controlled there. Okay, so let's do the same thing again with our Bermuda Bay here. We'll just dab it in there, get a little bit of ink or a little bit of alcohol and just put it right on top of the ink that we wanna work with. And then just kind of move it around until it picks up all of the ink from the Stampin' Blends, just like that. 
like I said, this, so this is a little bit more controlled. It also is going to take you a little bit longer than just using the heat tool all and pushing around the ink with that. So you can kind of turn it on. I like to start from far away and come closer and it'll kind of push the ink around, but you can see it starting to kind of marble that look, just like that. Okay, and then move on to your next color. We'll do this pink, our light polished pink color. Okay, and just kind of do the same thing. Let it move around. So essentially you're just making multiple little pulled sections of the alcohol within your different colors. Okay, and you can see on this one, it pulled a little bit of that um, Bermuda Bay and brought it into the polished pink, but it just kind of makes a little purple color there and it just adds to it. I just, I love it. I kind of love that color. So I'll, I'll finish this up, but let me show you the finished card here. You can see, so I just put a piece of white cardstock right behind that and then added some gems and a thank you. I stamped that in stays on black on that vellum and you have kind of a, one of those geode looking cards. Super simple and it takes a little bit longer than the part one of the marbling technique, but what a cool effect. Okay, so once you kind of can get that idea down where you're kind of controlling that um, pool of alcohol and ink a little bit better, then you can move on to the next part, which is this card and making kind of these little rosettes. Now this takes time to get used to, but I do wanna show you um, some different tips and techniques you can do to make the little rosettes. It's the same idea as we did on this card where you're going to have the individual places of ink and pull that ink all in one spot. So you can see here, I've done one and finished it. On this one, I've done one layer of the ink and alcohol and this one I haven't finished or I haven't even started. So I wanna start here and show you kind of from start to finish what we're gonna do. So on this one, you're, I've just colored the Stampin' Blends. This is the dark polished pink color, and you're just gonna color a little circle, circular area there of the polished pink blends, just like that. And on this one, I'm going to actually pour the um, alcohol when I'm starting this right from um, my alcohol bottle because I'm going to use a little bit more than what I can get from my spritzer. So this is always a scary part. You're trying to control how much you're going to get there. I could pour it just from my spritzer bottle too, but it really doesn't make a difference. But I just want a good amount. We'll start with that and see if I can get what I need from there. So we're just going to kind of like before, we're going to let that alcohol just run and try to get it to, I'm gonna grab just a little bit more. Okay, we're gonna let that alcohol kind of run and grab all of that ink that I want. And you can see once it starts to dry and it makes that ridge, it, it sometimes has a hard time getting over the ridge that it makes. And you can use a paper towel and kind of create the edging that you want there. Maybe just pour a little bit more in. Okay, so I'm gonna take that alcohol and just let it flow to the edges, just like that. And then I kind, you have to be kind of patient. I'm gonna just let it kind of dry for a second. You can always come in with your heat tool. The heat tool will make it dry even faster. So it really just depends on the look you're going for. If I bring my heat tool in, again, stay far away and come in slowly. You don't want it to push your ink as much as you just wanna help those edges to dry, okay? Okay, so you can see I have 
kind of just one of a little bit one of these pools like what are on this card okay now to make the rosette I want even more of those pools just all stacked on top of each other does that make sense I hope so so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour a little bit more alcohol each time but I'm not going to let it get to the edge of my circle I'm gonna and this is always the part that it's like oh I might mess up because I might get too much alcohol so we hope and pray that doesn't happen so like that I'm gonna dab up as much as that as I can get because I did way more alcohol than I meant to do okay we'll see if I can salvage this because the thing is if the alcohol touches it it's going to affect any of that ink that it touches okay so pretty much what I have now is I'm starting all the way over so I'm gonna just dry this and this is gonna be my new circle of ink once I get that dry okay so as you can see it you can't control it <laughs> it really is it takes such a practiced hand and it takes so much time and it you can mess it completely up but if you are patient I'm gonna add a little bit more ink in here just in the center if you are patient with yourself I promise you can create a beautiful rosette so let's try again I'm gonna add just a hopefully just a little bit of alcohol just a drop and we're gonna try that again so on this one my hope is not to get all the way out to the edges because I want those edges to be like the edge of my flower does that make sense so with this ink in here I'm hoping to make another ridge and you can see that forming all along there and I have a good amount of ink in here now, so I may even be able to get two ridges out of this ink. So if I let it dry again, we might get another ridge. Okay, so you can see I got a few ridges out of that actually here, which looks really cool. So now we're gonna go back in with a little bit more alcohol in the center and just do it again. Okay, and push it out to the edges, just like that. And then you can see I have another ridge forming. I'm coming with my heat, just like that. Okay. Now that I'm dealing with a smaller place here in the center, I'm gonna go back to using the little thing when in my spritzer so that I can control the amount of alcohol that I'm getting a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm gonna add just a little more ink with my Stampin' Blend just in the center because I want to have plenty of ink to, um, to continue having that really good pink pigment all the way into the center of my flower. So now I'm just gonna dab a little bit of alcohol using my spritzer, and I can control that just a little bit better. And then do the same. Keep just making those ridges all the way through. Okay, I'm gonna add just a touch more ink there in the middle. And then try to just get that center. Don't want too much alcohol. Maybe just a little bit more.
Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So you can see that kind of rosette just all stacked right on top of each other. So, like I said, it takes a lot of patience and some time, but it can really make a really, really cool look. So let me bring in the card. Again, you can see the different rosettes that I've made here. Super duper fun. Um, I do want to show you one more stepped up version. I decided I'm going to make a part three of our Stampin' Blends marbling technique. I made this look, so I made a rosette, and then I added some of our gilded leafing along with it, so you get even more of that gold geode looking um, rosette. So in our part three, watch for that to come in the next few weeks, I'm going to show you how to add in some gilded leafing on your rosette to give it a really cool dynamic look. So watch for that. If you have any questions on how to do it or if you need any tips or anything, please reach out to us at sudemonstrator at gmail.com or you can always follow us on Instagram at Stamping Jill. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next week for another Watch It Weekly Wednesday.